carry on our uh, our uh, thing that we were talking about. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if this is a new idea for most people. Um, this is the first time I'm uh, putting it publicly uh, to a class. But it seems to me it all seems to connect up and make sense. Uh, but obviously you can come to your own conclusions and have time to think about it and digest it and everything. The, the World Wide Web is actually the program that runs the internet. So the internet is actually the computers all linked up around the world. And the internet and the, the World Wide Web is the actual sort of software, the program. Um, so I don't, I don't know what's the best analogy between that and the brain, but the brain is like the internet, the heart, the, the, the nerves. But within the brain, actually, we have certain pre-programmed faculties. You've probably heard of the language faculty uh, in the human brain. I mean, it's pretty obvious, a pretty overwhelming evidence that brains, they have got certain things already programmed in there. For example, how to acquire language. Yeah, so th that's the relationship between the World Wide Web and the Internet. Uh, an important thing, you know, Edward Snowden, people may remember back in uh, 2013, there was a massive scandal. Um, he was a guy who was just an employee in, this, I think, the CIA or the NSA. Uh, NSA, sorry, National Security Agency. He was not high up or anything. He was just, uh, you know, one of these guys that just doing like data crunching and everything. But he quickly realized that there were, you know, the, the amount of surveillance that was going on and tapping and spying on people, including Americans themselves. So it's not just other people, but their own population. Because ultimately, for them, people in power, uh, knowledge is control. Information is control. Um, the more they know about human beings inside their country and outside, uh, the more control uh, they will have. So he then went public, you know, he leaked massive amounts of stuff. It was a massive scam. He had to run away from America because they were going to probably lock him up and do all sorts of things. So he ended up seeking asylum in Europe and things like that. Um, Revealed numerous global surveillance programs, mainly run by, many run by the NSA. Don't forget the NSA is a national security agency, uh, one of the main intelligence gathering bodies within the, uh, within the White House. Uh, separate from the CIA and the Pentagon also has its own. Uh, but, you know, they're all linked together. The Five Eyes Intelligence Alliance. The Five Eyes, interestingly, these are the five Anglo speaking countries. So USA, Canada, Britain, Australia, and I think New Zealand was the fifth one, wasn't it? I think it's New Zealand. Um, that they've got a particularly very close cooperation to share intelligence, as they call it. Yeah? So this communication, I mean, obviously they have, they are directly getting information from telecommunication companies, your phone companies, um, your internet, you know, your Google and Yahoo and all these people. So this was why it was a scandal because, you know, they're not protecting your information and your data. They're sharing it with these government agencies. Um, so these were previously unknown details of how this uh, very close cooperation is taking place between these five different uh, intelligence uh, operations. Uh, PRISM. So this was approved by the US courts that these agencies could have direct access to Google and Yahoo accounts. You know, so massive uh, issue here. I mean, even if, even if the courts had not allowed it, they would have been doing it anyway. But, the, you know, the fact that this was actually sh sanctioned by the, the court system. Secret court orders. Yeah? that phone records, millions of phone records should be handed over every day. So they're just gathering and, and what the computer allows all of this information to be gathered because no human beings could keep all this information. You couldn't keep it on paper files or no, no one person could. So, But the computer can store limitless information. 
you know, which can be then tapped into uh, on demand. Um, so then, you know, these sort of softwares that they were using, X key score, collection of almost anything done on the internet. So the, the Guardian was one of the, the newspapers that Snowden was <coughs> revealing uh, all of this stuff to. I, sitting at my desk, could wiretap anyone, from you or your accountant to a federal judge or even the president, if I had whatever, I can't read it. Personal email. Oh, personal email. So, you know, he was just, he was just, he was shocked himself as a, as a citizen of the United States, and that's why he went public with all of this stuff. So NSA is paying US private tech companies for access to communication networks. So these, these, they were basically bribing them. These governments have got a huge amount of money, so billions of dollars are put in. Um, at the end of the day, these are companies, they want to make money. Yeah? So if, if you're going to pay us a few million, well, we you know, quietly just hand you the information that you need. You know, who's going to stop them? So this is an interesting quote here, NSA mission statement. This is, you know, you can publicly consume this. It's not hidden from the public if you looked it up. The NSA had plans for continued expansion of surveillance activities. The stated goal is to dramatically increase mastery of the global network and to acquire adversaries' data from anyone, anytime, anywhere. See the way they, you know, the type of uh, language they use, the rhetoric. <clears throat> yeah? Collect it all, process it all, exploit it all, partner it all, sniff it all, know it all. <laughs> that's, uh, that's literally what they're, they're, they're going towards, yeah? That's what they're, 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 they're almost there. I mean, especially for us living in these Western countries where we're very in, in connected into the digital system. They, they know every single thing about us, you know, every single thing. From, you know, if you look at your NHS records, for example, your school records, you know, uh, it was a, it was a I, I was very uncomfortable as a psychiatrist. Back about 10, 15 years ago, this whole st thing started getting put into the databases, you know, people's personal histories. Because we used to see our patients. When I was a young psychiatrist, we used to see our patients very confidential. <coughs> You know, because they're telling us very personal things about themselves, about their life, their childhood, that bring and we would make paper notes, you know. And we keep it very carefully filed away. No one can see them. But then about, you know, 15 years ago or so, this whole thing now, all the NHS has to go digital. We're not allowed to keep paper records anymore. So everything has to be put into the computer. And then everyone can access that. Anyone can access that. But so now, you know, everyone, everything about you is there within the computer, databases, wherever. If anyone wants to find out about you, anything about you, click of a button. And this is going back to that key thing that I was emphasizing earlier in the Quran, the ayah of Quran. Akhrajna lahum da'batan min al It's not against them. The beast that rises up is for them. That's a classic in the or Orwellian type of thing, isn't it? We're doing all of this to protect you, the citizens. We are protecting you all, you know. Yeah. It's a scary it's a bit it's ominous, really. This is for your own good, you know. We're here to look after you, give you entertainment, let you enjoy yourselves, but just don't think the wrong things. Yeah. Then, you know, uh, in my period of reflection upon this beast, it the Bible, remember when we talked about our methodology, that there is stuff in previous revelations in the Bible, for example, you know how I talked about how if we compare stories in the Quran with stories in the Bible, you find a high degree of uh, similarity, you know, even the stories of Musa and the other prophets. So that led me to think that there's still a lot of truth within these previous revelations. Obviously, we cannot know what is accurate or what is not accurate unless the Qur'an confirms it. Uh, so we take it almost like a very, very weak hadith, you could put it, you know, on that level. That, okay, it's there, you know. But it, can, it could be of interest, you know. It could be of interest to see what was written. Um, so what does the Bible say about the beast? 
Because the Quran only has got that one ayah, you know, that one ayah. Sorry, I've gone into a sort of first person narrative for some reason there. Um, so this is what the, the, the revelations the, the, um, in the Bible has got quite a lot of stuff about the beast. Um, then I saw another beast rising from the earth. This beast had two horns like a lamb, but spoke like a dragon. And this beast exercised all the authority of the first beast. So there's two beasts. <coughs> and caused the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast. So the second beast causes everyone on the earth to worship the first beast. So you could see a parallel here between the Dajjal, who is going to claim to be God uh, ultimately, and then this second beast, you know, the Jasasa. And the second beast performed great signs to cause even fire from heaven to come down to earth in the presence of the people. Because of the signs it was given to perform on behalf of the first beast, it deceived those who dwell on the earth, telling them to take, make an image to the beast that had been wounded by the sword and yet had lived. The second beast was permitted to give breath to the image of the first beast, so that the image could speak and cause all who refused to worship it to be killed. Um, what I'm suggesting is perhaps the first beast here could be the Dajjal, and the second beast could be the Jasasa. It seems to have some correlation. So then it talks about the mark of the beast. The second beast required all people, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on the right hand of their forehead. So this seems very close to the Quran, Taklimu yeah. and especially the Hadith, which said that everyone will be marked by this beast, the second beast. So that no one could buy or sell unless he had the mark. So very interesting, you know, how we're now all swiping our cards, yeah? I mean, this is, some, once again, this would be out of frame of reference of people in the past, you know, completely out. How could you envisage everyone in the world buying and selling with one mark or one number? So that is absolutely interesting here, yeah? that no one can buy or sell unless he has the mark, the name of the beast or the number of its name. Imagine the frames of reference, but now for us it's an everyday reality, right? We're literally using the numbers to, to, to buy and sell. And here is a call for wisdom. Let the one who has insight calculate the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man and the number is 666. So the number 666, you've all watched Omen, right? Yeah, there's so many different... Obviously, people have thought about this for centuries. You know, what is this 666? What is that number I signify, etc.? The two beasts are aligned with the dragon in opposition to God. They persecute the saints. This is not now quoting Bible, but this is about, you know, what it is. They persecute saints and those who do not worship the image of the beast of the sea and influence the kings of the earth to gather for the battle of Armageddon. The two beasts are defeated by Christ and are thrown into the lake of the fire. <coughs> This calls for wisdom. Let the one who has understood the calculate number of beast is number of a man, number is 666. So I was thinking about this 666 myself. And uh, one day a few years back, and I was thinking, because, you know, letters have, in Arabic, letters have numbers corresponding to them. And um, I thought, well, it's a Semitic language. Maybe the Hebrew, because obviously the original language of uh, the Bible is Hebrew. Maybe the Hebrew also has letters. So I just Google searched and found out that was true. Like the Arabic has letters corresponding to. This is an ancient thing as well. It's from before Islam. The Arabic alphabet was abjadiyya. You know, it's, 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 it's got certain numbers for certain letters. And uh, it turns out that the Hebrew also has letters. And this was, I found, I was quite shocked when I came out. The number six is W. <laughs> no. The number six is actually W. No. It's wa, wa, what we have, the wow in Arabic. Yeah, but so six, six, six is literally W, W, W. They add it up, don't they? Well, they probably do. That's what I'm saying. There's so many different ways people have looked at it and tried to think what's going on and all that. Um, but I, I was like, whoa, God, this is like 666-WWW. This is, look it up for yourselves, but that's, 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 that's a fact. In the he Hebrew numerology. 
So yeah, that was, um, I thought, subhanAllah, you know, is it just another coincidence, you know? <laughs> and finally, so if we just recap back on today's lesson. Obviously, this, you know, for, for, for many people, maybe slightly reorientating your ideas about the beast that you may have had before. Um, but what I would say is, um, <coughs> look at the alternatives, you know. If we're saying, let's say the beast is not uh, the global computer, internet, and what, if you take it literally, you know, do, do you, is, is, let's say it's a, that hairy beast, you know, that you're saying there's a hairy beast. How, is it, is it conceivable, rational, that there will be a hairy beast that will be marking 7 billion people going into all their homes, you know, they'll be going into all of their homes, they'll be, you know, um, sharing with their wealth, you know, is it conceivable that can be taken literally? That's of course, anything is possible with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course, yeah, yeah, definitely. So that that's something to think about, you know. Um, is it going to be some sort of big, hairy, Godzilla type of monster that's going to go around talking to everyone? Or, uh, you know, is it this thing that we've already got in front of us that we've seen? Is this what Sheikh Imran thinks as well? No. No, he doesn't. Sheikh Imran's got to come different. <laughs> Example. Could we ask could yeah, yeah, yeah. Or I mean, we're coming to that point where you cannot buy or sell without the number, you know? Because Sheikh Imran said he was on an aeroplane and they wanted it. he wanted some water. He must have been on one of these cheap flights over there. You have to buy it. And they said you have to pay for the water. And uh, But they wouldn't take cash, you know? They wouldn't take cash. So, so it's coming that way. I mean, you know, you're not going to... Who, how many of us carry cash now anyway? No, no one does. Yeah, we're all just swiping with the number. So you know, I mean, I think there's a. This is the, this is the. Uh, this is my argument anyway. Um, as I say, uh, as far as I know, this is a a a, a new uh, interpretation, or this is the first time I've presented it publicly. And um, however, you know, the hint came from Sheikh Hamza Yusuf. I don't know if he himself has elaborated on that. You know, but it's it's obviously a very direct hint that it's from sil silica. <laughs> You know, but this is a physical beast that we're talking about. You know, it's a physical beast. It's going to be killing people. It's killing people. It's marking people. Um, the question of consciousness, again, like if you look at animals, I mean, this beast is not close to a human being, as we said, but it might be close to, say, an ant or a fly, which have got much simpler nervous systems. But they are living beasts. They are beast dabas, you know. So it's, it's, it's almost identical, really. So that's the beast. So we have one left. Yajuj and Majuj. Please bear it through, inshallah. Come to the next class. Uh, we'll be in High Wycombe. Then we're finished. It's uh, been a, I feel it's been a journey, you know, a long journey together since we started the first history course. And for me, it's a big journey as well because um, this is the first time I'm teaching this eschatology, which I've wanted to teach uh, for a long time. But. Uh, <coughs> روبا محمد سبع سماوات كيف الأمان